In December of 2018, a young woman from the United Kingdom who had recently graduated from university disappeared on the eve of her birthday. She was on a globe traveling adventure post graduating, having landed in New Zealand 10 days earlier. Excited and eager to celebrate her special day, she went searching for someone to celebrate with, since her loved ones were halfway across the world. She opted for the next best thing to meet new people, social media. Days later, her body was discovered buried in a shallow grave 21 miles from Auckland, where the hotel she was staying at is located. This is the story of Grace Millane. Grace Millane was born on the 2nd of December 1996 to parents David and Gillian Millane. Born and raised in the United Kingdom, Essex, Grace was surrounded with love, warmth and laughter alongside her two brothers. Grace was described as a vivacious soul who had a heart of gold, was deeply loyal to her friends and had the most brightest and most radiant smile on her face. She loved life, was very creative, often showing off her creativity through the art of painting. As she grew older, Grace went on to attend St. Thomas More High School, where she obtained her high school diploma, and decided to further her studies in Lincoln University, where she studied towards a bachelor's degree in marketing and advertising. Together with her studies, Grace also found a part-time job so she could save up to fulfill one of her future goals that was taking a year-long post-graduation adventure across the world. And true to her word, after graduating in 2018, Grace finally took that adventure she dreamt about and prepared for. She started her exciting journey with a six-week-long adventure in South America where she enjoyed herself to the fullest, taking loads of pictures, sightseeing, and making memories. She was ready for her second destination, that was New Zealand. Buzzing with excitement, Grace touched down in New Zealand on the 20th of November where she spent 10 days in the Northern Islands and by the end of the month she headed off to Auckland and checked in at the City Life Hotel. With her most exciting day yet, her birthday fast approaching, Grace was already making plans of how she wanted to spend her birthday. The only problem was she was alone in a foreign country with her family and friends halfway across the world. So she went in search for someone local to the area to spend the day with. She went online on a dating app called Tinder and was charmed by a guy named Jesse Campson. Jesse, who was 26 years old, was a Wellington native from New Zealand. He had a rough childhood that was mocked by his parents' divorce when he was just 9 years old. Shortly after the divorce, Jesse's mother relocated overseas, leaving Jesse to be raised by his father and grandfather. In 2013, Jesse and his family were estranged, so he relocated to Australia. However, by 2018, he found his way back to New Zealand. His relationship with his family at this point was severed because of the countless lies he told. Jesse was a pathological liar, creating and telling different stories about his life to everyone he encountered. He would tell some people that he had cancer, to others he would say his mother was dying of cancer, and other times he would say she was already dead. Exactly what is and isn't true about Jesse's past is hard to pin down. When he arrived back in Auckland, however, Jesse had no job, no home, and no family to go to for help, so he had to come up with a plan of where he could stay. He managed to find a place to stay, but that only lasted two weeks because his housemates sensed something just wasn't quite right with him. 
Jesse then moved into the CT Life Hotel where he rented a room. He would, however, have trouble paying for that room. The CT Life Hotel was a mixture of affordable hotel rooms and privately owned apartments, so the building was often filled with people who were there for a short period of time and others staying there for longer periods of time. On the 1st of December, Jesse and Grace met over Tinder with Grace looking for someone to spend the night and her birthday the next day with. The two agreed to go out on a date and they were captured on CCTV cameras as they left the building heading to town. They were also captured on CCTV cameras where they enjoyed a few drinks together. After a while, they left heading back to the CT Life Hotel where they both stayed. While on the date, Grace exchanged several text messages with a friend, updating her on how the date was going. She sounded content and happy with Jesse on the text. CCTV cameras captured Jesse and Grace heading to Jesse's room, but sadly, they never captured Grace leaving Jesse's room to return to hers. Grace was never seen alive again. The 2nd of December, Grace's birthday came and went without Grace's family and friends hearing from her. Despite sending her several birthday wishes and birthday calls, Grace never responded. At first, they blamed it on the time difference and thought Grace was out enjoying herself on her special day. But when I was turned to days, anxiety kicked in and on the third day, they reported her missing to the police. The police quickly made note of the fact that Grace was last seen alive with Jesse, helped by the CCTV cameras, so they focused more on Jesse. And it wasn't long before their suspicion of Jesse grew. Jesse was seen on CCTV cameras entering a supply store hours after being seen on CCTV cameras entering his apartment building with Grace. He exited the store with a large suitcase that he took back home. A short while later, he was again spotted entering a local supermarket where he bought bleach, rubber gloves and other cleaning supplies. A few hours later, he would rent a car at a rental car company. Jesse then found his way to another Tinder date with no care in the world. The police had enough to arrest Jesse, so days later, he was apprehended at the hotel. They searched Jesse's room and it immediately became a crime scene when police found traces of blood on his carpet using a chemical known as luminol that can pick up on traces of blood. The blood was then confirmed to be that of Grace. He was then arrested for Grace's murder. The day after Jesse was arrested and charged with Grace's murder, a body was found buried in a shallow grave off Scenic Drive, 21 miles from Auckland. An autopsy was carried out on the body and it was revealed that the body was that of Grace Millane and she had died from asphyxiation. Jesse would admit to strangling Grace but said he did so because she asked him to when they were involved in sexual intercourse. He said it was an accident and that he had panicked and drove her body out and buried her. However, it was uncovered that Jesse took several intimate pictures with Grace's deceased body, done multiple searches on how to get rid of her corpse, and even watched porn. It was after all that and his Tinder date with another woman that he decided to bury Grace's body. Jesse would plead not guilty at court even with the mountain of evidence against him. He was unanimously found guilty by a jury of 12 jurors and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 17 years. The sentence came as a great relief to Grace's family. Jesse tried to appeal the sentence but was unsuccessful. Grace's father, David, flew to New Zealand to bring her home and she was buried in a cemetery in Essex. 
Grace was an amazing young woman who was a free spirit with a spirit for adventure and a smile that could light up the darkest of days. She never had the chance to fulfill her dream of seeing the world, a dream she worked so hard to see through. May she rest peacefully.